Intracranial Hemorrhages. Hello everyone, welcome to today's lecture where we will explore one of the most crucial topics that is intracranial hemorrhages. An intracranial hemorrhage refers to bleeding inside the skull due to a ruptured blood vessel, which can occur in different locations in and around the brain. Depending on where the bleeding happens, we classify intracranial hemorrhages into five main types. Epidural hemorrhage, subdural hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage, intracerebral hemorrhage, and intraventricular hemorrhage. Each type has distinct causes, symptoms, and radiological features, so let's go through them one by one. Epidural, extradural hemorrhage. Epidural hemorrhage is bleeding between the skull and dura mater, the outermost covering of the brain. This type of hemorrhage is most commonly seen after head trauma that results in a skull fracture, particularly a temporal bone fracture. The fracture often injures the middle meningeal artery, causing rapid arterial bleeding, making this a neurosurgical emergency. A key clinical sign to remember for epidural hemorrhage is the lucid interval. Initially, the patient may lose consciousness due to head trauma, but then regains consciousness and appears normal for a few hours. However, as the bleeding continues, the increasing intracranial pressure, ICP, leads to a sudden and rapid deterioration in mental status. If untreated, the hematoma can cause uncal herniation, which compresses the oculomotor nerve, CN3, resulting in pupillary dilation, blown pupil, and contralateral weakness. On a CT scan, epidural hematomas appear as a biconvex, as should lentiform hyperdensity, and an important point to remember is that it does not cross suture lines because the dura is tightly attached to the skull. Management of epidural hemorrhage usually requires emergency craniotomy to relieve pressure and prevent further brain damage. Subdural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage is bleeding between the dura mater and the arachnoid membrane. Unlike epidural hemorrhage, which is arterial, subdural hemorrhages result from ruptured bridging veins making the bleeding slower, but more insidious. This type of hemorrhage is commonly seen in elderly individuals due to brain atrophy, which stretches and weakens the veins. Other causes include shaken baby syndrome in infants and chronic alcohol abuse, both of which predispose patients to repeated trauma. Clinically, subdural hemorrhages can be acute or chronic. Acute subdural hemorrhage occurs after significant head trauma and leads to rapid neurological deterioration whereas chronic subdural hemorrhage may develop over weeks to months, particularly in elderly patients with minor head trauma. Symptoms include headache, confusion, memory loss, and gait disturbances. On CT scan, subdural hematomas appear as crescent-shaped hyperdensities that can cross suture lines but do not cross the midline due to the presence of the foul cerebri. If the hematoma is small and asymptomatic, it may resolve on its own. However, if the hematoma is large and causes a midline shift, surgical evacuation via burr hole drainage or craniotomy is required. Subarachnoid hemorrhage, SAH. A subarachnoid hemorrhage refers to bleeding in the subarachnoid space where cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, circulates. There are two major causes of SAH, trauma, which is the most common, and rupture of a berry aneurysm, which is the classic non-traumatic cause. Aneurysmal SAH is often seen in conditions like polycystic kidney disease and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. The hallmark symptom of SAH is a sudden, severe, thunderclap headache, often described as the worst headache of life. Patients may also present with neck stiffness, photophobia, vomiting, and loss of consciousness. On CT scan, SAH appears as hyperdensity in the basal cisterns and sylvian fissures. If CT is negative but SAH is still suspected, lumbar puncture is performed to look for xanthochromia, which indicates old blood in the CSF. A serious complication of SAH is vasospasm, which can lead to delayed cerebral ischemia. This can be prevented with nimodipine, a calcium channel blocker. Management of aneurysmal SAH includes endovascular coiling, or surgical clipping of the aneurysm to prevent rebleeding. 
Intracerebral hemorrhage, ICH. Intracerebral hemorrhage refers to bleeding within the brain, parenchyma itself. The most common cause of ICH is hypertension, which leads to rupture of small penetrating arteries in the basal ganglia, thalamus, pons, and cerebellum. Other causes include amyloid angiopathy in elderly patients, coagulopathies, and vascular malformations. Patients with ICH present with sudden neurological deficits, such as hemiparesis, slurred speech, and altered mental status. On CT scan, ICH appears as a hyperdense area within the brain. Management includes controlling blood pressure, often aiming for a systolic BP of less than 140 millimeters of mercury, and in some cases, surgical decompression may be needed. Intraventricular hemorrhage, IVH. Intraventricular hemorrhage occurs when bleeding extends into the brain's ventricular system, which contains CSF. This type of hemorrhage is commonly seen in premature babies due to their fragile germinal matrix. But it can also occur in adults with hemorrhagic strokes or trauma. A major complication of IVH is obstructive hydrocephalus, where blood clots block the outflow of CSF, leading to increased intracranial pressure. Management focuses on supportive care, ventricular drainage, and sometimes ventriculoperitoneal, VP, shunting if hydrocephalus develops. Thank you. Stay tuned for more videos.